let's discuss how we wire up some different types of PLCs. Um, this is a small compact logic PLC. It's a, a 16ER, uh, L16ER. I think the first initials are BB1B. All right, these are project PLCs that we have in our class. Uh, a couple things to point out. I'm going to point with a electrical probe so uh, I can kind of trace some stuff. Um, for all intents and purposes, if it's a red wire, it's DC positive. It's a, if it's a black wire, it's DC negative. I know that this black wire is DC hot. I should be using a different color, but this is what I had lying around. So since this is the only AC to this power supply, I'm not going to worry about it. But you can see black to line, white to neutral, green to ground. Off of this power supply, I just have the positive and negative, and I ran it to right here. And if you take a look, there's a VDC plus and a VDC minus. And you can see the red and the black. That VDC plus and minus, um, that does not power my outputs here. It only powers the processor. So if you wanted to, and many people do this, you could put a switch in for in between here because what powers my inputs and outputs are this F, FP plus and this FP minus. Um, that means field power, positive and negative. So not only do I have to run from both these terminals, and you got to check the tech documents because it doesn't like it if you jumper from the, these two negatives down on this series of PLC. So you have to run separate. Um, just keep that in mind. So you can, if you can see that, get a better look at that. You can see the red, the two reds and the two blacks. Okay, that powers the P, the top two powers the PLC. And in theory, I could put a control relay between uh, or a switch before the negative, uh, one of the po I mean the positive field power positive, and that will keep my power from flowing out of my inputs here. Okay, and if you take a look, remember what I talked about in the last video. Take a look what it says right here. 24 volt sink DC input. Okay, and you can see on this other side um, a DC output, 24 volt source. That's, that's what we showed you the wire. And if we trace the wires of this, um, because I know I got a switch right here and I got a, a light, because I know that power from the DC power supply, this red line is coming to this field power here. It's going to come out of this. I can tie off of it right here. It can come out of this red line through my switch. So you can see it tied to the switch back here and out that black wire to my input. Now, because I have this already set up here for this field power it's automatically a ground from there to there, okay? And as for my outputs, power is automatically going to flow out of this output to the light, and then it's going to go back to common. This is not a traditional PLC in that regard. So if I plug in to show you, I'm going to plug in to show you. Let me disconnect the other one. You can see it's powering up, and it's going to go through a, a cycle, uh, kind of a diagnostic cycle, make sure everything's all right. But this is normal with the startup. Dun, 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 dun. And if I was going to wire this with a lot of outputs, a lot of inputs, I would run everything off of terminal blocks. Um, since I only have one input and one output, there's nothing there. And now take a look. When I flip the switch here, you can see a light turned on that corresponds to that being turned on. And if I flip the switch, then it turns off. Now you happen to see the output turning on because there's logic in there and you can see on this light that it is on. That corresponds to that right there. Because the because so the input is switched, 
sends a signal to the, uh, to the input card, and the logic inside the processor is going to be telling then the in output zero to turn on. And you can see how those are corresponding. So grab my probe again. You can see that the zero is corresponding to here, and the zero is corresponding to there. Okay? So let me unplug, let me turn this off. And how we get the wires in. So it's out of power. So how we wire this up is literally all we have to do is push on this. If I had the right screwdriver, let me go get the small screwdriver. Hold on. Terminal block screwdriver, look at me go. All I have to do is push on this and I can pull this out if I had more than one hand. And there it is, it's out. See that? So that's all that's how all that's how we wire these in. We just push on the little tab and we can then and it push it in other way and then we just push it in and it kind of clamps it down. Okay? If you have a whole lot of them, you can actually unscrew these little terminals right there and pop this whole thing out. If I wasn't... and I can pop this whole thing out and I can wire these off from afar and then place it back in. So, see how that works? And I can just slide that back in, tighten the screws down. They make these, try to, and you can do the same thing with this. Okay? This is how you wire up this 16 ERM processor.